Hello guys, uh, it's Mike Strong, ML Auto Keys in West Sussex. I just want to have a quick video this afternoon um, about these things. These are Ford Transit Custom Ignition Cylinders. And I'm sure quite a lot of you have experienced the problem with the uh, getting the key stuck in the ignition, not being able to turn it. Sometimes you can turn it on and sometimes you can't turn it off so this one is right on the verge of uh, becoming permanently stuck so but as you can see we can turn it position one two and three and it's getting stuck at position one so we've got to force it back to zero now the way these fail is one of two ways it either fails in the zero position so you come along with your key put your key in the ignition into the shops and it won't turn this has been going on for quite a while um a quite a few weeks you you know you've noticed that you've had to jiggle the key in the ignition to get it to turn well it does come to the point where and it's happened to quite a few of our customers where they come, put the key in the ignition, and it doesn't matter how much wiggling they do, how much jiggling of the key, it simply will not turn from position to uh, zero. At this point, um, you're stranded, and pretty much you've got two options. Either call a mobile auto locksmith to come and sort the problem for you on site, or, and this is what a lot of our customers do, they get the vehicle recovered by a breakdown service or sometimes they have to pay privately to have it recovered back home and then they contact someone like me and we give them a quote to come and some you know either repair this or if it's unrepairable it has to be uh, drilled out in some cases it, when it's completely knackered inside we have to forcibly remove it from the ignition switch and fit a brand new, complete brand new cylinder. Um, in order to remove this lock from the ignition, you can see, if I show you on this one, it's a bit easier. We've got this, this block here, and that's a spring-loaded piece of metal. So you can see it. You've got to push it down with a tool. And that's what retains it, this cylinder, inside the ignition switch housing. But in order to push this, this block in, the ignition has to be turned to position one. See that it fully retracts there. If we put it back to zero, it doesn't matter how hard we try, we can't press that retainer in. It will only press in fully at position one. So that's why it's important <clears throat> that we can be able to turn the ignition to position one in order to remove it from the steering lock. Uh, otherwise, we have to drill the whole thing out. It takes quite a long time and uh, it's very messy and it will require a complete ignition, st um, ignition steering lock cylinder. So, as you can see, this one here, it's got a... It's got a lovely freshly cut blade, it's a brand new blade. And the wafers in this lock are all brand new. And as you can see, it turns perfectly fine. There's no dragging, just works perfectly normally. And that's how the ignition should be. So this one here, this is one we removed from a Transit Custom a little while ago. Luckily we got to this one just in time as it's just at the point where it's starting to fail. You can see there's, there's not a lot of wear on this key blade. I've seen a lot worse than this, but it is starting to wear in this area here. And what's happening is the key is getting quite thin. And as you insert it into the ignition, the little wafers inside the lock, which we'll show you in a minute, they ride on this, this cutout section here and there's spring-loaded wafers so you've got a spring that's always pressing the wafer up and the, as you insert the key into the lock the key 
the, this valley forces the wafers down uh, but what's happening with this is this particular part here the wafers aren't riding in this ridge because it's so thin the wafers are actually riding on the edge of it and that's why when we try and put it in the lock and try and turn it, it we've got the problem where it's stuck at position zero now if we put a lot of force on it and turn it we can get it past and get it to start but again it's getting stuck at position number one now if we force it we can turn it back to zero now these fail in two ways uh, in one way you'll be able to drive the vehicle home in the other way you're completely stranded so if you come to the vehicle and this can happen at any point whatsoever you will know this is going to happen because for some weeks before you'll find that the key is really notchy and it's you know you're finding that you have to jiggle it to get it to turn and you know this problem is not going to get any better uh, all that's happening is the more you're wiggling it the more you're wearing it out and the quicker you're wearing it out some people try and spray wd-40 in the lock uh, that is not fixing the problem at all that is simply making the problem worse still so uh as I say, they fail in two positions. So you can either put the key in, start the vehicle, drive it, and then you go to switch it off, and it will only go to position number one. So it will only go to accessories, and it doesn't matter how much you twist the key, it, you will not be able to get it back to zero to pull the key out. Um, that way isn't so bad, because at least if you're out, you can still drive the vehicle home and then you can get in touch with a locksmith if however and this has happened to many of my customers you you're in the shop you come back to your van you put the key in the ignition you try and turn it it doesn't matter how hard you turn it doesn't matter how much you jiggle it it won't turn past the lock position it's almost as if it's got an incorrect key in the in the ignition uh, and at this point if you're out away from home at work out down the shops at this point you're stranded but you simply can't start your vehicle um, and your options are either call a mobile auto locksmith to come and sort it out for you on site uh, at, which is going to really cost you quite a quite a fair chunk of money or you call the breakdown service if you're if you're fortunate enough to have a breakdown membership or other customers I've known, they don't have a breakdown membership and they've had to pay privately, uh, call a recovery company and pay for, for a private recovery. And, you know, depending on how far away from your home, you could be talking over a hundred, hundred and fifty pounds to get your vehicle recovered back home. And then you've got to call a locksmith like myself and then we're going to come out and sort this problem out for you so why what happens in the lock why does this happen this is a question I'm getting asked by the customers what's actually gone wrong so if we if we start with this lock here as we say this is this has got a brand new set of wafers in it it is a used ignition but it's we've just refurbished it for this video you can see we've cut a, a brand new blade literally just come off the machine and uh, goes into the lock turns absolutely perfectly no problem with that at all so if we just disassemble this lock quickly and uh, we'll show you the internal workings and what happens so there's there's essentially three parts to this lock you've got this part here which is the outer cylinder case You've got this part here, which is the, the inner carriage, and this part here, which is the actual plug for the, for the lock. So if we take this out, take that out, and then we can remove, we'll have to take the key out to do this part, we can remove the inner cylinder, 
carriage and the plug so now we've got the anti-drill plate there and we've got the actual cylinder housing and then we've got the we've got the inner lock carriage here this part and then we've got the plug here now these these two parts interact this part here is where the key blade goes in when you insert it from the outside and this part contains all of the wafers that the key blade interacts with now this part here has just got one purpose and it's to stop the inner plug turning with an incorrect key so if we now remove this you can see these here are all of the key wafers and there's ten of them in this Ford lock and as you can see with the correct key inserted all of the wafers are withdrawn into the plug and if you look at the inner lock carriage you can see these two cutouts well when you pull the key out all of the wafers will spring out like so as you can see they uh, they are pushed out with little springs and in fact there's a little spring which is now gone um, so yeah those those wafers with, with the key pulled out all of those wafers are sticking out top and bottom and they are sticking into these cutouts here and that's what prevents the lock from turning so when we insert the correct key you can see that the uh, the lock will turn perfectly and if we pull the key out it's very difficult to see but you can see there you can see the wafer at the end there they've all popped out into that cutout and that's what prevents the lock from turning so if we just move all that out of the way now what we're going to do is we're going to disassemble this faulty lock and we're going to show you what has happened here why this lock won't turn properly let's pull that out we're gonna have to take the blade out take that apart same parts outer cylinder the inner carriage and the plug and uh, you can see the back there you can see the wafer sticking up now if we insert the key if we insert the key here you can just about see that the wafers are not being pulled down it's very difficult to see through the camera here you can just see the end one there is just sticking up ever so slightly and that's all it takes it just takes ever so slightly to be sticking up again it's uh put a bit of light on here it's very difficult to see but as you can see there the wafers are, are not being pulled down properly. So let's just get this to turn and then we can pull it out and we'll show you properly. Okay. So you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about in a minute. Again, through this little window, it's a bit difficult to see, but we'll get the plug out and you'll see properly. So I'm having to press each one of the wafers down just to get it out. If you remember the other one, we just pulled it straight out. So, 
as you can see see the wafers that are sticking up that's it's almost as if the key is miscut see this this here all these wafers should be the same as this one here let's put the key in it and show you they should all be like that and that's the difference that's why your problem is not going to get any better on its own it's only going to get worse and it's going to get to the point as i say unless you get this dealt with by a specialist automotive locksmith like ourselves uh, unless you get this problem dealt with promptly the moment that you notice that the key's starting to get a bit notchy in the ignition or it's starting to get a bit you've got to jiggle it to get it to turn um that's the point you need to contact someone like ourselves um to get this ignition repaired for you or you're going to end up stranded so if you are having this problem and you've got a ford vehicle a transit transit custom ford fiesta do a lot of ford fiesta vans with the same problem different style of ignition but exactly the same problem uh, if you want to get this sorted you can get in touch with me white strong at ml auto keys in west sussex the number is 0771 851 859 you can call me or the best thing to do is to send me a text or whatsapp message and uh, I can get back to you straight away and we can get this problem resolved for you and hopefully you don't end up stranded so if you need any further information on this we need replacement keys locks or security devices you can get in touch with me Mike Strong ML Auto Keys 0771 851 859